All right, it's confession time. I made a slight mistake in the last video. Let's get that fixed. Okay, it's a very minor mistake though. Um, the stamps that I did in the first video to clean stuff up, uh, I did not have down here. So uh, when I was going ahead and making these layer copies, uh, they weren't getting all the corrected information that I wanted. So I just have to pull these down here and then it's actually pretty easy. I just have to replace these now. So um, I already have these to select so I can just hold control and click on this. And so if I do this uh, and then all I need to do is hit control shift C. So what control shift C will do is it'll copy anything that's visible. And then I could come right above here or right on this layer, hit control V and it will paste in this finished uh, piece right here. Now I'm actually going to leave uh, this here because I'm actually going to use this, but I'm going to copy the name and I'm going to move the name here and then I'm going to call this uh, bevel and I'll show you what we're going to do with that later. Uh, if you've gone through the first video, then you might have a hint. It's what we did at the uh, beginning or I should say the end of the first video. So I just got to do the same thing here. I'll just hold control, click on this and then I'll hit control shift C copies everything you could see hit control V we'll paste it and now I'll just go ahead and copy that I could have just typed it that's like nothing and but we'll go ahead and change this to bevel like that uh, the great doesn't really matter actually now that I think about it um, the only one that we actually did any alterations on was the outside so we don't we don't actually have to like fix that so much, but uh, we still need two layers for all of these. So uh, let's let's go ahead and just do the same thing that we were already doing. So Control Shift C and Control V, Inner Trim, paste that in there, and then I'll call this the bevel. Okay, so. Uh, why am I making two layers of these? Well, what we want to do is we're basically going to craft our own height map. And to do that, I am actually going to hide the non beveled ones. And we'll take a look at this. Let's see here. Great. The great we don't have to do one on. Uh, so we'll have these. And then I'm going to actually uh, alpha lock all of these. So if you click on this little button right here, uh, when you're on the layer, it actually locks it so that you can't paint outside of uh, anything except for over the pixels that are already present. So if I bring a brush out here and I paint, you can see it'll only let me paint on the pixels that are already painted on. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to hit Alt Delete and I'm going to paste in white like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for these. So I'll just grab both of them at the same time, alpha lock them. You can see this little lock comes up here. That'll let you know if you try painting on them and, and forget that that's on. You you know, sometimes it's frustrating. Like, oh, why can't I paint on this? Just remember this is on. So we've got that. And then I can go ahead and hit alt delete on these. We have to do it individually. So alt delete and alt delete. And now we've got that figured out. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to figure out like how much of a bevel do we want on this. And for that, I'm just going to go ahead and double click. We'll start, I think I'm going to start in the outer one. So double click outside here to get up your layer styles. Here we go. And I can go to my inner glow and let's see what it's set up as. So the size is huge. I'm going to turn the size way down like so and it's on softer I think I want it on precise maybe that's questionable the softer might be more accurate um, but let me just look at it yeah this is fine either one let me look at the softer this might be more how it actually looks yeah I think I'm gonna go with the softer okay so that that looks pretty good actually so what this is gonna do is that when we put a normal map on this or we use this for a normal map, it'll basically look like this is raising up and then dropping back down. Okay, uh, I forgot we have to do the hinges too, but we'll get there. Uh, okay, so we've done that. So I could hit okay, and then I can just copy the layer style. So right click over it, copy layer style, and then we can go to the next one. And since this one's pretty much the same, we could just right click, paste layer style. And there we go, that looks pretty good. 
And the next one, we're gonna go to the uh, to the inner trim. And I'm gonna go ahead and say paste layer style, but I know this one's not exactly right. So we'll take a look at that. So let's bring out the actual layer. And you can see by just examining this that the layer is pretty, you know, it's kind of a pretty tight edge right there. So we're not gonna want this bevel to be soft. We're gonna actually want that to be the precise bevel. So let's get that back out. I just double clicked on the inner glow here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change this to precise. And it's also not this large. So we're gonna to wanna to take this down so it's like kinda of just barely anything. Just a little bit of edge right there so we can get just some normal information. And I'll hit okay. And now we've got all of these. So what's next? Well, we wanna get the information of kinda of like the chips of the paint and you know even these little uh, divots in here that's from the screws so we want to get that information so that turns into like a you know sort of a light normal map uh, detail over these so I'm gonna go ahead and hit control shift I no sorry control shift U which is desaturate and I hit it on the wrong layer control shift U sorry there we go so you can see it turns grayscale now and the way that I do this, it's pretty simple. Uh, I don't want it to be too much of a contrast and we want it to blend in with this down below. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just start lowering the opacity. Um, there's a lot of, there's some date, debate whether you should use filler opacity. I don't know what the difference is. I've been using Photoshop for years, um, but I don't, when I do stuff like this, I can't see a difference if I put it at 40% opacity versus 40% fill. Um, but so from here you can see like you're still getting that bevel information and you're getting like a little bit of light you know, detail information. I don't want too much detail information because then it gets really, really, what's the word, uh, noisy when you make a normal map out of it. And, and you know, that's going to depend on what your subject matter looks like. I mean, maybe it needs to be that noisy, but you'll have to make that determination when you're working on stuff like this. Uh, so. Um, the next one, obviously, we're just going to do the same thing here. And we'll go ahead and we'll come into the mid bevel. We'll bring this up. And I'll go ahead and just control shift U, which will grayscale it. And then I think, what did I put this at? 40? Yeah, so we'll just try the same thing. If it's too high, like when I put the normal map on it, if it's too high, you can just go ahead and lower it. In fact, I can tell with this one, I think it's, it's going to be um, too high. Uh, or I should say too... Um, opaque so I want it to be more transparent that's what I mean by saying hi you, I want to see less of this so it'd be something more like that it's still gonna give there's a lot of contrast in here even though it looks a lot softer they're still gonna give a lot of contrast when we uh, apply a normal filter on this so then let's go to the last one here we'll unhide that control shift U um, Let's see here. So I still have this information in here. Something's, something's wrong with this. Let me go ahead and just control click on that. And it's right here. I don't see the little handle. So I'm just gonna hit control shift C, control V. And then I'm just gonna collapse this into the outer rim. So it's named outer rim, uh, it's covering it. You can see there's a little bit of difference there. So just control E will collapse down, control E, and then control shift U is to desaturate again. Okay, so that's what I wanted. I don't know how I messed that up, but apparently I did. Easy fix. Oh, let's bring this out. So uh, the last one I did, the mid was at 22. So we'll do this one at 22 as well. So just lower to 22. And so now we just get like a little bit of that kind of paint and the uh, metal underneath it and this this will basically go through a normal map filter and that will give like a detail that the the paint is a little bit higher than that metal and if it needs to be changed like i said we can come back okay so what else we have the lights we can do the same kind of thing here so i actually can just go to the first one and i could just right click paste layer style it's not going to be right uh but we'll go in and fix it so just double click on it Bring this up let's go to the inner glow and for this one we're going to want to 
increase that size a lot, something like that. In fact, I'm going all the way up. And, um, you know, you can play around this. I, I don't think I really need to do anything more than just this. This looks pretty good. Say OK. One of the things I wanted to know, too, though, is that if you actually look at these lights, you can see there's these little ridges here. And we could get some of that, too. Uh, we could go ahead and just control click on this and we could copy that and just like use a blending uh, style to layer those together which we, we won't do right now but we'll do that in a little bit once i'm done uh, with this step so i'm just going to copy layer style here and then i'll click on the bottom one here and hold shift click to the rest of them paste layer style so it'll paste it to all of these so you can see they're all having that gradient now and remember we made this little kind of mask here. So I'm gonna hold control, click on that. So it's gonna make the selection of this area, this outer area. And what we're gonna to wanna to do then is, since it's selecting you know, only in that area, um, we should be able to just come up to here, hit uh, control shift C, control V, and then I'm gonna get, go and hit control shift U, desaturate it. Now, this one's a little bit special. What I do with this one, because this doesn't really need to be raised or anything like that. It should be fine the way it is. But I, I know if I run this through a normal matte filter, all of this little you know, contrast, uh, the dark will look like it's receding and the light part will, will look like it's popping out. But it's actually, like I don't think that panel is actually that bumpy. So what I do is I'm gonna select it one more time. Just hold control and, hit, and click on this. A uh, little swatch here, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, a brightness contrast on it. So put a brightness contrast on it, and because I've masked it, it's only going to affect um, what's right here. Now, if I want to lock it to this, I could also hit uh, Control Alt G, and that's uh, called a clipping mask. And what that does, you'll see this little arrow comes out, and it makes it so that this only affects uh, the layer below it. Uh, and you can clip it, clip mask a whole bunch of layers together so that they're all only affecting whatever the base layer is. Um, and I probably don't need, uh, I'm not really sure. Let me see something here. Um, I'm not sure why the circle, this little thing came up. I'm gonna hide that. I'm not sure why that was in there. So let me go ahead and do this one more time. We have the selection. Maybe it's because in the paths here. Let's deselect it there. Okay. Um, so I apparently it was selected here in the paths, this this uh, ellipse. And so it was adding that into um, like the masking that we were doing here. So I'm just going to do that again and go ahead and just say brightness contrast. Yeah, now it's gone. Okay, so now with this one, I, I'm going to change it to legacy because I can take the contrast all the way down on this, but it won't doesn't do enough for my liking you can see there's still kind of a lot of contrast but if I click on use legacy and then I start taking that down it'll it'll take out a lot more of that contrast so I'm kind of doing something like that so now we're just gonna get a little bit of normal information in there that might still be too much so we could you know we can lower that even more another thing you could do too is you could just take this and bring it up up here um, because this is like a flat white layer and you can just start lowering the opacity of that that would actually pull some contrast out of it too but it's kind of redundant to, to have a, a, an extra layer in there but for right now I'll just leave it here um, so uh, what I would want to do then is like I can say uh, control G group all these you know boring part remember we call it that boring part something like that and uh, now uh, we haven't grayscaled the this mid part here, or the, I should say this center great part. So let's go ahead and pull that out. Select it, control shift U. Um, this is lighter than everything else. Uh, so it might not matter that much, uh, but if we wanted to make it basically the same, we just hold control, click on this, make a new layer, alt delete, so fill it with white. And uh, we could go ahead and just like lower the opacity on this. So it's basically the same as, as how all the other ones look. So that, that should give it about the same amount of contrast and, and noise differentials and stuff like that. Now what's gonna happen is that because this is darker, 
um, these are naturally going to look like they're receding in. We'll have to do some maneuvering to make sure that uh, they don't, you know, they don't look shiny and stuff like that in the uh, roughness map. But that's a that's a different step than what we're doing now. Um, you may look at the outside here and say, oh, that's not as light as uh, as this, so it's not going to look right. It, it won't matter that much because these are going to be kind of separated um, anyways. Like, like it's going to look, it'll probably look just fine. So let's get to the last part here. Uh, the last part is, well, second to the last part, sorry. Uh, the second to the last part is let's go ahead and take this ellipse that we had. We've got um, this path here. And what we want to do is, since it's living in the layers here, we also want it to live in the paths here. So we're actually going to go ahead and drag that into a new layer. And we're just going to leave that right there. So now it's living in this area. And technically, we probably don't even need this anymore. But I'll just hide that. And now we'll just work on this one. It seems kind of confusing that they're both there. So I'll go ahead and just select a different layer. And now you can see that you only see the one that we copied into here. OK, so what we want to do with this now is we want to scale this out. And we're going to stroke uh, the path so that we can just use a brush to stroke around where this like little raised lip is going to be here. It might look fine with just using the way this looks now. But we want to definitely make sure that you know there's a it looks like it's lifted higher than the rest of the panels and stuff like that. So, so to do that, all we need to do is with this selected, with this path selected, hit Control T and hold Alt, and we can just go ahead and scale that. And I'm going to scale it so that the middle of the path is right in the middle of the rim that you see around there. So it looks pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty good. Maybe a little bit further out, just a tiny bit more. And I'll hit enter. OK, so now that we have that, we can get the brush tool out. So just hit B on your keyboard or your brush. And we just want a simple brush. We can right click. And you just want to pick like your, your simple soft brush, one of these, something like this. And what we're going to do is the hardness, probably 75 is probably fine. And then you got to figure out the size. Like the size should basically, um, when this thing strokes around the path, it should basically go from like one edge of that little rim to the other edge on the inside. So I'm going to try it at, we're at 10. I'm going to maybe go to like 12. And let's see how that works. Let's just find out. So uh, we also need to have this on a layer. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer and hit plus, And I'll call this rims or rim uh, RT lower, something like that come back to the paths. And then we'll just click on this little button here, which is to stroke the path. You have to have the brush tool selected, by the way. So just make sure you have the brush tool selected. Hit stroke path. And am I on the brush tool? The flow is at 90. You probably want that flow to be all the way up. So why is this not drawing anything? Oh. Ha, huh. of course. And this has happened to me probably thousands and thousands of times in Photoshop. Control D, deselect. So since we had this area in the middle selected, we couldn't do any other maneuvering uh, outside of that area. So that's something that I run into a lot. And so I'm just going to leave it in here so you can see what happens. So let's hit brush again. And then let's stroke that path. There we go. OK, I can see that my stroke is just a little bit too small. So I'll just undo that, Control Z. And right click, and I'll get my size out here. We'll change this to like maybe 15. A little bit bigger, a little bit more pixel range there. And boom, there we go. That looks pretty good. Uh, I can come over to here to hide this and just see that that's nailing it right where I want it. Yep, that's good. Looks good. Looks good. Now we don't have to keep doing that. Uh, all we have to do is we can just duplicate this and we can drag it over. If you hold shift when you drag, it will drag it in a perfect line. So uh, I could do that. And then I can just hold control. If you're not on your move tool, you could just hold control. And you can use your arrow keys. So or on a liar. Hmm, for some reason, it's not working. Not sure why. Let's see. Now it is weird, weird, weird. It wasn't working at first but it seems to have resolved itself somehow. 
All right, so we'll just zoom out a little bit, zoom out, and then I'm gonna hold V. I can also duplicate it this way, Shift Alt, just drag, and drag it down, we'll zoom in, hold Control. Yeah, for some reason, when I'm holding Control now, it's not moving this, not sure why. I can grab it with my, like my mouse and click on it, but for some reason the, the um, I don't know what's changed. I, I've walked away from my computer for a while, so maybe Windows did some weird update. I don't know. I'm not sure why that didn't work right, um, but normally it does. So now see, I'm just holding control to change this to the move tool temporarily, even though I'm still on the uh, on the zoom tool so that's the way I can like kind of jump between these tools that I use all the time but apparently right now it is forcing me to go to the move tool to go ahead and use the arrow keys uh, you saw in the other videos if you watch the other videos that was not the case <laughs> so something weird's happening but no biggie all right so now that we've got all that done let's just go ahead and fix these hinges then we'll do the selection for the lights uh, and then we'll just layer in those ridges so that it looks like these lights actually have ridges on them. So we gotta do the hinges here. Hinges are right here, I'm gonna duplicate them. Uh, we'll go ahead and say, this will be actually the upper one, so this one will be the bevel. Um, I'm gonna do this by hand because the way that the bevel tool works, it's going to put a gradient over here, even though technically, uh, there wouldn't need to be one. But what I'll need to do first is alpha lock this, uh, alt delete, fill it with white. We can't see it yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. So now we have this alpha locked. Um, I can go ahead and take the brush and I'll right click and I'll just take the hardness all the way down. So it's nice and soft and maybe make the brush just a little bit bigger. And I'll go ahead and change this to black. You could also hit X by the way to switch your foreground and background color. So if you just tap on X and then I can just come over to here and let's see here, is that working? Oh, I'm on white, silly me. Okay. Yeah, okay, so if I don't, if you know, if I'm like, hey, I don't know how good this will work, let's just make a new layer. I'll click once here. Oh, I'll show you another trick. Here's another trick. So um, you can click once and then hold shift and click again and it will draw a straight line between these. So it's just that, that operation of holding shift. Uh, but you, what you could also do is you could also hit cap lock and it'll basically toggle the paintbrush size to a little cross here. So if I get the paintbrush size, like where I know that it's right about the right size, like maybe I want, I want it like this, I could go and just hit cap lock, uh, hold, sh click once, like so, hold shift and click again. And then see how it draws right in between the two. Now that's not exactly what I'm looking for because it's too dark. So I'm gonna go back to, by hitting my cap lock, I'll go back so I can see this, make this a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna sort of eyeball this, but I might just hit cap lock again so I can kind of see what I'm doing. So that's sort of what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna click once, hold shift, come over here click again. So now I get this nice little rounded type of thing. And I can go ahead and just collapse that in to the layer below it once I've got this one done too. So do the same thing again. Uh, click once, hold shift, click there. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as it's close. It's just this very, very small detail. Uh, that one I didn't get close enough. So I'm gonna just go over it one more time like that. And then I just can just collapses into the uh, the hinge bevel. So control E will collapse it down and now these are all one layer. And then we just take this. Uh, actually we want the hinges out. There we go. And we'll take the hinges and we'll lower the opacity on that. So maybe something like that. I think the other ones were at 22, but I'm, I'm not gonna squabble over that little change, that little bit. So, all right, so this is what we need basically to make our height map. Uh, so we're ready. 
Uh, let's go ahead and just copy this whole thing, or I should say save as a copy. File, save as copy. And I'll change this to a PNG. And then I will do, this is the second uh, height map. I've already had one that I saved out, so I'm just gonna save over it. And then we'll jump into Substance Designer to show what it'll look like in Substance. All right, switched over to Substance Designer. Here's my texture that I just saved out. I'm gonna drag that in and just hit Link Resources. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Uh, yes, sure, I do. Yeah, that's the one I want. Just make sure it was updating properly. Um, and then I'm gonna do one more thing before we get into substance even more, is I'm just going to hide everything else. Uh, so the best way to probably do that would be to select all of these, the panels. Oh, I do have them in a group already. I forgot I grouped them. This is what happens when you put a day between your tutorials, you forget what you did the day before. Uh, okay, so let's just do that. And we'll just make sure that all this stuff is hidden. We'll call these the rims, control G, light rims. Like that. Looks like my cat block's still on. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm gonna save this as a color. Uh, and it looks like I made a mistake though. I need to pull these two out. So I'm gonna just pull these and drag them so you can see this little blue line here. And you can see that they're not they're not at the same uh, indentation as these, which means I just pulled them out of the group. So all of these that are indented a little bit are underneath this group. And so we need this and then we wanna save this as a copy. So save as copy and then, I actually already have it saved so I don't really have to do that again. So I'll just jump back to designer. Um, you understand how to save files. And so then you want to just drag that in as well. Link resource, and I'd already had it in here before I was checking it out. So that's why it's giving me that extra little message there. So I'm just gonna drag this into the uh, base color. You can see it's there, looks super shiny. Uh, let's go ahead and change the height. So we, by default, we'll have this normal conversion. Now you'll note that there's this orange dot here and the orange dot means that this is RGB, but we need this to be grayscale. So we're gonna have to drag out a grayscale conversion, which is this little node right here. So I'm gonna drag this into here and then I'll drag the grayscale out. And then once we do that, let me take a look at this. You can see now how this thing looks like it's got paneling and it's raised and I just realized I forgot to do the lights. Okay, Danny boy forgot something. All right, let's go back. Let's do the lights um, super fast. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead so you can see what's happening here. I'm gonna hold control, click on this, hold control uh, and shift and click on the rest of them. And what that will do is add to the selection. So uh, over these little panels here, you just hold control and you can click on it. It'll grab whatever pixels are in there. And then if you hold control and shift as you grab the next ones, it will grab all of them. Once I've done that, I can come down to this layer right here um, and I can just hit control C, which will copy the selected area on this layer and then come up to here, hit control V. And so now we should get a flattened, hmm, control C. Let me see, is this thing doing, I think it's doing that. I had to deselect the path. That's sometimes a, that's weird. Like you don't realize that you have that path still selected. So control C and then come up here, control V. There we go. Yeah, that was the problem. Okay, I can grayscale this, control shift U, just so we keep everything grayscale. And uh, then now we're back to, we have to unhide everything that we had done before. And then I'm going to go ahead and just basically lower the opacity on this. I'm gonna call this light ridges, light ridges. The reason why I'm pretty militant about naming stuff in Photoshop is like you can get lost in this stuff so fast. Um, you know, there's times I've had files with, you know, hundreds of layers. So instead of getting lost, 
I would rather just like go ahead and name a few things. I'm just gonna lower it, make sure it's like somewhat see-through, but the ridges are still there, like so. I think that'll work. It's this is not a perfect way to do this. I mean, if I wanted to get really, um, you know, persnickety about it, I could go ahead and make some kind of weird gradients. And you know, you have radial gradients, and you can actually make your own stuff. If I wanted to make it perfect, I could do that. But at the same time, it's also like um, it would be really, really hard to match exactly what this thing looks like. So and the time would probably not be worth it. So I'm just going to do it this way. File, save as copy, and we'll save it back over our original one. And since we have our original one already linked in Substance, it should just, yeah, relink it. You can see it's doing it right now. So it's going to come back out. Wait for it. I don't know if everybody else has this thing, but when I'm in Substance, it seems like um, updating link stuff is really, really slow. Yeah, you can see like that actually works pretty good. I mean, it looks like those ridges in there, even though I just kind of did a hacked version of it. Um, and, and this whole thing is really a hacked version, <laughs> if we're being honest. Like, you're just basically like finding a way to take what you already have there and sort of make it into a height map. It's the whole purpose of this tutorial is like, can you do that? Um, I'm going to throw this in the roughness, even though uh, it's, you know, not accurate yet, but just so you can kind of see what happens. Um, anything that's lighter will look more rough and anything that's darker should look a little bit shinier. So that's I, I have to make like a mask in the roughness so you can get the shininess out of these these divots right here, these little separations. Um, you know, same thing with like this roughness should probably be the same all the way across here. But since there's such a gradient uh, on there, you, you see it changes. But kind of gives the idea. All right, so that is the normal map part or the height map part, I should say. Uh, speaking of height map, I mean, you know, we could drop this thing all the way down here into the height map if we wanted to and actually it just raised up a little bit. So we are getting a little bit of actual, you know, height in there. And you can see that that kind of works too. Like it doesn't look bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, and you can even see here, like the lights look like they go lower, the rim comes out a little bit. So pretty nifty, pretty nifty. All right, I think that's it for this one. We'll jump into making the rest of the maps in the next one. Thanks for watching and happy texturing. Yeah, happy texturing. Have a good one.